Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, friendly reminder, on Monday you have vocab 11 through 20, and Tuesday you have 21 through 30. You do not have a test on Wednesday because I'm not seeing you Wednesday because it's PSAT. On Thursday, when I do see you, I'm starting memory. I'm starting content. So there will be a little bit of an overlap. Then on Friday, you are taking your learning to test on Friday. Then on Monday, I'm going back to memory, and then we'll have, you're going to have a day less of memory, which just really sucks because <laughs> um, it's a huge unit as well. And it's a full chapter, fun fact. So, ladies and gentlemen, you definitely want to make sure that you are starting your homework this week because the end of the week is going to get a little rough. Can we agree? So, it's going to be a quick turnaround, so it's an odd week. So, please make sure you're doing what you need to do. On your whiteboard, here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I just forgot to grab one. Okay, on your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called? What is the name of the dude behind Layton Learning? Good. I got one, two, three. Annalise. Tolman. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Tolman is his experiments are on what type of animal? Oh my god, I look like death so much today. My phone didn't recognize my face. <laughs> That is so sad. Oh, man. No, no, it's not. All right. What do we got, Luke? Rats. On your whiteboard, please tell me. With the rats, uh, the rats knew where the food was by using their what? Good, good. Sophia? Cognitive maps. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of... Uh, please tell me, what is it called when all of a sudden the answer comes to you? Good. What is it, Nina? Insight. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when someone learns a lesson and then they don't even try helping themselves and they think one thing and that nothing can be changed? Good. What is it, Curtis? Learned helplessness. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when you watch something and be able to then do that thing, not by practice, but just seeing it and doing it, like watching a YouTube tutorial and you know how to do something. It's what? Sydney? Observational. Observational learning. All right, here we go. So yesterday, I've already told you, but I'm a dum-dum, and I didn't teach you the major experiments that will be on about late, uh, I taught you late in learning. But I did not teach you the experiments with uh, Selgman. Now, you need to know that Selgman is responsible for learned helplessness. All right, scoot a little bit over. Okay, so Selgman, you need to know learned helplessness is Selgman. And that's who does it. So... He is going to, I don't have a video for this one, and you really don't want to see the videos. Don't Google it. What is it? <coughs> Give me two seconds. Yes. It's called the Press Dogs. Look at you. Okay. Now, he is obviously doing uh, experiments on who? Uh, They're golden retrievers. It, is it does make it worse. Because golden retrievers are like uh, good old American dogs, you know what I mean? Anyway, he does them on uh, golden retrievers. Not that it would be better if it was a black lab, because like Toby, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. Huh? So, it's on both. So, Selgman, learn helplessness, depressed dogs. So, what happens is, is that he puts a dog in a cage with a hundred, uh, so he puts a dog in a cage. Oh, God. Oh, no, this is like, creepy. Okay, so he puts a dog in a cage. Then he electrocutes the cage 100%. Electrocute? Electrify? Electrify. Yeah. Whatever. You get it. Okay? <laughs> He's the whole 100%. Electrify. 
I should not be that funny. My, my brain hurts for big bullies. I have like two hours of sleep, but I made a lot of money. So I ate all you want. <laughs> just, just watch the damn thing, people. Okay, so they put a dog in a cage. And they're like six months old, too. So they're like puppies. So there is a video. I wouldn't Google that. It's not something you want to say. Okay. So, he is going to put a dog in a cage, a metal cage, just like you probably have if you have a kennel at home, okay? And they electrocute 100% of the cage. So what is the dog going to do? Yell. He's going to yelp and he's going to run around the whole cage looking for a place to go. What is he not going to find? A place to go. A place to go, and everywhere he goes, he gets electrocuted, okay? So, then the next time they put the dog in the cage, they only do it... 90%, okay? They only do it 90%, but that little 10% is in the corner, okay? It's a dog. So while the dog is like, so they turn on the electricity, what does the dog do? He tries to find a place to go, and he's like freaking out, running around the cage, and 10%, is that really comfortable enough? Nope, okay? So the dog freaks out, can't find any place comfortable, and he's running around. The sec, uh, third time they do it, they do it 80%. Okay, they do it 80%. Okay, so what's going to happen by the third time they do this, what is the dog starting to figure out? That he can't escape it. So from the first time he gets electrocuted to even the third time at 80%, is the dog freaking out as much? No, the dog's not. Is he still moving around and uncomfortable? Yes, but is he freaking out? No. Okay, so... Then what happens, so as you can see, you can track it down. They're going to go to 70 to 60 to 50 to 40 and all that stuff. And they're going to electrocute the dog at every stage. Is that it? Congratulations! What up? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Camden, student affairs? Are you signing out? Oh, I don't know. He said student affairs. Uh-huh. Yeah, you probably can't Okay, so they're going to go through, and it goes down every single time. Well, every single time, the dog is going to try less. They try less every time, okay? Every time the thing happens, they eventually try less. So eventually, you'll get to where they only electrocute 20% of the cage, okay? So they only electrocute this part of the cage. With that being said, where they put the dog? On the 20%, they put the dog here. Okay, they put the dog here, and guess what? The dog doesn't even move. The dog just lays there. The dog lays. I really struggle with that. The dog just lays there. Now, if the dog just like rolled over, like just like fell over, he'd be safe. But he doesn't. He literally just lays there. Why? You can raise your hand and tell me why he just lays there. Why? Marga? Guys, think of how, if you went in from 100 and the dog's running around like a lunatic trying to find safe space, and now we're down to 20%, what has the dog absolutely been taught over and over again? That there's nowhere to go. So by the time he gets to 20%, where there's plenty of places to go, what has he been taught? There's nowhere to go. There's no point even trying. So what does he do? It is so sad. Don't Google the video. You don't want to see it. Uh, no, but they do get traumatized, and then um, they uh, they do put them down. They're depressed. They don't want to live. They don't, you can't replicate this experiment anymore. Don't do this to your dog at home. Hi. This was done in, like, the 40s or the 50s. Do you think they have the same rules we have today? No, we're going to torture a pigeon here in a moment. <laughs> okay, calm down. We're... we're we're going to have a monkey here in a minute. Oh, I got a monkey, too. What the hell was I doing yesterday? I said we were going to do it today. Oh, okay. I know, but, like, I should have taught this with the learning help assistance. We did big picture stuff. I think there's videos on it. No, you're even, like... What do we do, like... Is it Thursday or chill day? Yeah, you did say that. You did need to chill day, and I did. And I enjoyed it. Now I hate my face. So, here we go. This is learned helplessness. It's by Seligman. You absolutely need to know this. As you can see, we have taught the dog to quit, to not even try, with by the... Are you Googling it, Hayden? Are you looking <coughs> for these videos? No, I'm not. 
Okay, good. You're on Instagram? I don't know if that's better. Ads. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> so as you can see, <laughs> I was like, damn, hate it. That's cold, man. That's cold, man. Uh, <laughs> maybe this is why we didn't get to this yesterday. Um, we've taught the dogs that there's no point and there's no hope. That's a perfect example of learned helplessness, as you can see. I mean, it's been incredibly sad. I know. Don't watch why the videos. Why do you do on dogs? Like, that is so oh, okay. Because if mean, it was like a chinchilla, that would be better. Be no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All animals deserve kindness. What do you got, Sophia? Because it wasn't against the law. Ladies and gentlemen, like you do know in 2019, if your dog, if you don't want your dog anymore, you do know that you have the right to shoot your dog. Wait, what? In 2019, you have the right to shoot your dog. Now, in Tampa, you cannot shoot a gun in the city of Tampa. But if you live in Plant City and your dog is dying, you can just take the dog in the back and just shoot it in the head and be done with it. So you need to understand that laws are evolving and experiments like this and other ones that are significantly way worse by the way have been done today in 2019 there are still laws on the books that allow for animal cruelty there's like 12 states in the union that there's no punishment for animal cruelty okay you can't do anything like if I went home and I skinned my dog like, I could be perfectly fine, and there's nothing wrong with it, because he, I did skin Toby. Toby's, McCray's home taking a nap right now with Toby. <coughs> I just got that text. I need a nap more than those two. Anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, I know. Okay, we're getting back on topic, because we got wildly offhand yesterday. Okay. What my what yesterday was a bad yeah. class? What tragedy? No. My class? Okay, you just messed up class. Oh, the game. Oh, okay. We're on two different topics here, girl. Okay. I'm traumatized. Well, you'll be okay. All right. So let's do inside learning. Do you want to do with a pigeon or do you want to do with a chimpanzee first? Which one's sad? Well, they're both kind of sad because, like, oh, the pigeon one is way sadder. Okay. You people. Actually, the chimpanzee one is actually cooler. All right. Pigeon. Okay. Now, inside learning is when all of a sudden you get the solution. That's what inside learning is. Like you're doing stuff and you don't know how to figure out, and then all of a sudden you have it. That is being done by. We don't care about the Mongols. You need to know inside learning was created by Kohler. K O H L E R. You need to know that Kohler is the one who comes up with uh, insight learning. All right, so Kohler is the guy behind all of this. Okay, so here's my little pigeon. There's no sound to it. So the pigeon wants a little banana. You'll notice his wings are slow. Okay, so can he reach it? No. Okay, how many times has he tried to get there? I don't know. It's inside learning. We'll see if he figures it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a pigeon. Oh. His, his wings are clipped. Like cool. Look at how much how much air he gets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's like the little pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Quandary for you. Are you smarter than a chimp? Um, oh God, Kohler, people. Kohler, um, do that or yeah, that he's this one. I'm but insight that. learning is done by Kohler, he and he uses it on all different things. Wait. He does pigeons. He does chimpanzees. His famous one is the uh, pigeon, uh, the chimp one. Okay. So 
A chimp one. Kohler's famous experiment, the smart chimp. Okay, so the smart chimp is the Kohler one. Okay, so what it is, is that we have a monkey in a cage. official smart chimp, like the official, official one for AP. However, there's a couple of them. Um, and this is also color, but this is not just like the official one. So, I'm going to see if you're smarter than a chimp. Are you ready? <coughs> Do you think you're going to win? You're probably not. I'm not going to lie. Here we go. At the Max Planck ah, Institute for Anthropology. Got it. Connor, are you not fascinated by my monkey to know if it's smarter than you are? No, I am. Oh, is that what was happening? Cool. Cool. I got it now. At the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, psychologist Joseph Cole places a peanut inside a clear tube. Okay. There is a peanut inside a glass Wait, no, say that again. Say that again. Peanut. Huh? Peanut. What's wrong with peanut? peanut? You said peanut. peanut. <laughs> By the way, this is being recorded. <laughs> and I'm so glad because I want to tell each of you personally that I hate every single one of you in your own unique way, of course. <laughs> I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Okay, there is that peanut. <laughs> what is wrong, peanut? There's a peanut. There's a peanut. Does it seem like I'm at my collective best? Ladies and gentlemen, I hustled hard last night. I made a lot of money <laughs> because my real job does not afford me the lifestyle I would like. So be nice to me. Please. Thank you. How would you get the peanut <laughs> out of the container? Turn and talk to your neighbor and discuss how would you get it out? It's attached to it. It's attached to the bars. You can't just dump it over. Hello. How do you get it out? Turn and don't talk to me. I'm done talking to you. You're rude. Talk to 
Talk to your neighbor. Yeah. How can the chimpanzee get the snack? She's never seen this puzzle before. For 10 minutes, there is no solution in sight. And all of a sudden, boom, they solve it. They have to understand that they can use the, the water as a tool. This is interesting because the water itself, it doesn't have any shape. Using water as a tool seems like something we would do on a good day. How many of you really would have figured that out real quick? I didn't know I had water. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you are not smarter than the chest. Okay. All right. Oh, we got Bobo dolls coming up. Oh, I'm so excited. Here we go. Oh, we're going we're gonna to teach some kids to, like... <laughs> beat the crap out of things. Here we go. It's going to be great. It's observational learning. Thank you for letting us live that, Alexa. Thank you. All right. So, Selgman is your depressed dogs. Kohler is your smart chimp and insight learning. We should write insight learning next to Kohler. You need to tie these people's names to their experiments, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, this is, of course, on your focus as well, by the way. Okay. So, Observational learning is what we're covering next. So observational learning is learning a new behavior by watching a model perform that behavior. Now, we've talked about it. You've probably done it. We talked about this yesterday, how you've watched a YouTube video. You've watched something. You've learned from it. And then you've implemented it. Made a cake. Uh, made someone, didn't someone make spaghetti or something? That was my next thought. Someone fixed their brain. Yeah! My girl Corinne back there. Hell yeah. Real tough chick back there. Okay? So... When we talk about uh, observational learning, we're watching something, learning from just watching, and then we replicate that behavior uh, without having to do it on our own. And the most famous experiment is the Bobo doll experiment. So in your application for observational learning, I would write Bobo doll. Bobo doll is by Bandura. And I have the original footage for that one. Bandura. Uh, it's kind of hard to find. Bobo doll. I'm not actually lying about that. It's kind of hard to find. Bandura, Bobo dolls, and you need to know it's observational. Huh? This is scary. No, it's not scary. It's little kids. We're going to see how it's terrifying. You see how we're manipulated. What? So, Bandura himself, is he responsible for observation? Yeah, he's the one who creates it. And he models it after uh, he ex uses the Boba doll experiment to teach observational learning. Okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to stop this video numerous times and discuss. So, okay, so on your focus, this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to watch the original footage. Okay, I'm also going to mute it. I don't think we need to listen to uh... Okay, so the, how the experiment works is on your focus. I read it in. Bobo doll experiment by Bandura. Okay, what is going to happen? They're going to have young children. They're about, like, I think the age of, like, 8 to 10 eight to ten years old, and they are going to watch a video of a woman, a grown woman, like I'm talking about a 40-year-old woman, like that woman right there. Like this is the original footage. Does that look like a young lady? I don't know. I mean, it is in the 50s and the 60s, but. Okay. So what's going to happen is that these small children are going to watch a woman beat up a bobo doll. 
Bobo dolls are actually used to be pretty popular toys. They're clowns. So this is before it. Okay. Uh, they are clown. Oh, and the serial killer clown. Whatever that guy's name is. Okay. So um, they used to be super popular. Anyway, if you punch a Bobo doll, it goes over and comes back up. Yeah. Oh. So something like that. Okay. So a Bobo doll. If you ever played with the toy that falls down and comes back up and like bounces back and forth, like they're kind of fun to play with. Get your rage out. Uh, anyway, so they're gonna watch an adult woman beat up the Bobo doll. Okay. So they're gonna have the kids sit down and watch this woman beat up a Bobo doll. Okay. So. Yeah. So she has a little hammer. And she just throws it around, kicks it around, okay? She's literally just playing and kicking around a Bobo doll, okay? I mean, I think we can agree. I mean, she's not incredibly violent, but she just sit on it, she just punches face and all that stuff. So, they let the kids watch the video, okay? Then they bring the kids into a playroom, okay? You need to write this down. They bring the kids into a playroom that has the Bobo doll and lots of other toys. Why is that important? Because it's not like it's their only choice. God, they have plenty of choices. Like, well, you'll see in the video in a second, you're gonna see like there's toys in the background they can play with, there's toys that they can pick up and play with and stuff like that, okay? So, the kids are forced to watch a video where they watch an adult beat up a Bobo doll. Then the kids are allowed to go play in a playroom that happens to have a Bobo doll, but lots of other toys as well. Okay, so here's the kid. As you can see in the background, there's plenty of toys that they can play with. Okay, right now the kid is just picking it up, kind of tossing it around. This is all behavior that the lady modeled. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. Picking up the doll, throwing it around. So essentially, the kid is copying the behavior of the Bobo doll. Now keep in mind, did the lady have a hammer and hit the Bobo doll? Yes. yes. So what is the kid doing? Copying. He's literally imitating the lady. Now look at that swing. If that kid's not in baseball, <laughs> like that's tragic. Okay, look at that. Nice cross. So he is imitating. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, is he doing anything different than the original? Now look at him now. He's now menacing. Look at him. Oh that is a. He is like now. Keep in mind when you saw the lady, what was her face? Was she, she was like so menacing, or was she just like pushing the thing around? She, she was pushing around. Okay. He has a more menacing stare. Okay. So now keep in mind the lady used a hammer. Did the kid pick up the hammer? Yes. But then the kids are going to take the original and make it more oh severe. You need to write that down. The kids are going to escalate what they saw. Look at this kid. He's got a gun, he's slapping it in the face with a hammer, and hitting it with a gun. Okay, so the kids in the video will replicate. So if you think it's just boys, Here's my girl. Okay, my girl's got some rage to work on. Okay, she's pissed off at the, at the scratchy dress her mama put her in. And she's like, yes! Rage fest, rage fest. Okay? Now, okay? Now, as you see, she does get distracted. Okay? Most of the girls will get distracted by the other toys. However, guess who she's going to come back to? Rage! up the Bobo doll will then go in that room 
and beat up a Bobo doll. Every single one. Every single kid will then take what was shown to them and escalate it. Okay? They take what they see and they escalate it to make it more intense. Now, as you saw in the original footage, was the lady, the old lady, and by old I mean she's like my age, but I think, I'm not really sure. But I feel old today, you know? Anyway. <laughs> With that being, that being said, they're gonna, that lady in the original video, was she doing it with hate? Was she doing it with rage? No. no. She was just like tossing it around. She's literally getting paid to toss it around, so she was just tossing it around. How did the kids take it? There's lots of rage. There's lots of anger. The guy is like, it's like talking shit to the family. <laughs> for God's sake. Okay? When we're looking at this, ladies and gentlemen, this should concern you. Because yeah. what is the real impact of this experiment? Like, let's think big picture. So we're in 2019. <coughs> this was done in the 1960s, the late 50s, early 60s. Okay? What, is, what does that show you, ladies and gentlemen? What should you feel, what should you be thinking for, like, your own, like, lives? Madison? Well, it, since I have my parents who date people with younger kids, if they watch any kind of video or movie that I'm watching, like, if it's, like, an action film or something, it's going to be <laughs> How many things have you seen that have been violent? Raise your hand if you saw something, and I'm not I'm not calling out your parents for being bad parents. That's not what I'm saying. But raise your hand if you saw something at a young age that you know was just not for you. Now, okay, you just saw something. You just saw someone get murdered or something on TV, and then you had nightmares for a long time, and you're like, oh my god, this is horrible. Okay, that's what the type of stuff I'm talking about. How much violence is on our TV? I mean, for God's sakes, it used to be only at night, and now it's on the middle of the day. You can watch people get shot. I mean, I love SVU. <laughs> I love SVU. Oh, holder. Anyway, with that being said, okay, you can watch a woman get raped any time of day because it's on, like, 24-7, okay? So what are our kids being exposed to? So when we look at our society today in 2019, Okay, I assume at some point this week we had a fight, right? With that being said, why, why are we so quick to throw hands, if you will? Because we're exposed to it at a super young age. And keep in mind, the, the haunting part, ladies and gentlemen, is that when we see something, which the Bobo experiment shows us, when we see something, do we copy it? Yes! But what's the scary part? We escalate it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, I, I, I was going to say something, but it was a lie. I was going to say I never got into a fight, but I did. Her name was Amanda Shannon, and she deserved it. She picked on my sister. All right, I've already told you this, okay? Now, did I beat up Amanda Shane because I wanted to, because it would be fun, because I saw it on a video? No, I was defending my sister. Now, I don't know about you people, but do you just go around because you've seen a terrible scene on TV that you're like, ah, i got to beat someone up? No. Okay? However, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to know that we've done even more research on this. And if you see someone you love, know intimately, do something, you're 75% more likely to do it again. So, if you come from a home that has domestic abuse, whether against your mother or against your father, either way, because men get hit too, men get abused as well, they just have underreported, okay? You're not allowed to hit anyone. It doesn't matter. Yes, you can't hit women, but men are just as important. They should not be hit as well. All right? If you're watching your mother or your father get hit on a regular basis, what are you more likely to do? So when people come from homes with domestic abuse, where they learn to cope with their anger by watching these things happen, what are they going to do? Hit. They're going to do these types of things. So that's just domestic abuse. What happens if they're watching their parents at a young age do drugs? What are they going to do? That's observational learning. But are they going to do the same amount? Or going to do worse? 
every time they do worse. That's the scary part about observational learning. Take that. You've seen your family do something stupid, correct? I'm not talking about drugs. I'm not talking about food abuse. Like, I'm going to tone it down. <laughs> However, you've seen your brother or your sister do something stupid, and then you're like, there's a quote, it's a meme, don't yell at me, hold my beer, and I'm going to do something stupid, right? More stupid. Damn it. Okay? That whole thing is observational learning. How many times have you seen someone do something stupid, and then you ended up doing the same damn thing and maybe did something stupid, like even more dumb? Observational learning. That's the scary thing about the Bobo doll experiment. How many things have you seen? How much have you seen at your house? Okay? Your parents do not have a perfect relationship. They don't. Can we all agree? Okay? You are not going to have a perfect relationship when you get older. Like my husband and I, I love McCray Bennett. We are not perfect. We are. It's great we vlog. Okay? However, we like each other, so we stay. <laughs> okay. I, I love him, but like, oh, he's so draining. He's cute though. He's redeeming. Okay? With that being said, actually, it's super cute. He, he had an appointment this afternoon, and he didn't want to go because I was. he knows I'm going to bed at like 7. So we canceled his appointment so we can hang out. Aww. I know. It's, so cute. it's still not redeeming enough. Okay? He's more crazy. So thoughtful. That's really nice. Probably not. Anyway, with that being said, what you see in your household, whether good or bad, you're going to do it. Now, can we do observation on the positive side? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If you have, if you were lucky enough to have two parents who actually genuinely like each other, what are you going to expect from your future relationships? The same. But you're going to expect more. Well, my dad did this for my mom and my family, and I expect my husband to be doing that or more, or my mom needs to do that or more. So, interesting, right? Yeah. If you have little kids in your house, will you be more aware of what they're watching? Yes. SpongeBob is not appropriate for small children. Well, you just so said that. <laughs> it's scary. I mean, think about all the things that you have learned that you don't even necessarily know that are going to come back up and haunt you. Have you ever seen No. What is that? It's a show, and it was terrifying. Well, I'm glad I didn't see it. I'm not what you would call brave. So you're doing drop cards? Me neither, but I just. On Friday. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, Nina.